Today, I'm going to show you how to use Fusion 360's sheet metal environment to create a round bottom purse. Alright, so today we're going to play around with making another bag pattern using the sheet metal function here on Fusion 360. This is just going to be a basic oval bag with, um, with a flap going over the top and a rounded bottom. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new project and come in here to sheet metal and create a new component. I'm going to select my sheet metal rule for this. In this case I'm going to use some 8 ounce leather and I can start creating my shape using a sketch. I'm going to click sketch and I'm going to start right here on the front. So I want to make kind of a round bottomed bag shape and if I started with a circle uh, I'm not going to be able to create a flange off of it. So instead, I'm going to use a polygon. So that's going to let you select a size and a shape. I'm going to make it 7 inches with 20 faces. So this is really similar to a circle now but it's got some flat sides for us to extrude off of. And I'm just going to kind of create a, a basic shape out of it here. There we go. And trim away some of this excess material using the trim command. There we go. I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of those little redundant lines and so that that's just one line that goes across there. Alright, so this is going to be the basic start of component one. So finish sketch and create a flange off of that piece. So I'm actually only going to bring it forward half the distance that I'd like the bag to be. So about two should be perfect for a four inch bag. Alright, so this is going to be the bottom portion of the shape. And I'm going to start creating some flanges to start to sculpt it. Don't be afraid to zoom in. Make sure you get each edge. There we go. I'm going to drag that in and make a 0.5 lip. All right, so now we've got a half of a bottom, and we can start creating our another component. So come up in here to your full assembly and create a new component there so that it's not inside your other component. I'm going to create a sketch and this time I'm going to click right on the front surface of this flange. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, projection, P for project, and start projecting some of these lines that might be useful. Alright, so now I'm creating this front piece here and I want it to be a circle. So I'm going to come straight out, create a circular shape, and then start to redraw my, my shape. Don't be afraid to zoom in and you know actually see what you're what you're looking at. I might even shut off the projected geometry, shut off the other piece, so that you're really you're just seeing what it is you're you're working with to make sure that you get the line. Uh, right where you want it to be. I'll turn that back on, bring that up to the top here. And I'm only going to come to the halfway point. There we go. So since most of the things you're planning on making are going to be um, symmetrical, I suggest 
making a line right in the middle of your project. And that way you've got something to mirror everything across as you're working. So there we go, we've got our basic half a shape. I'm gonna mirror this piece across this line. Now I've got one on the other side. Actually, let's say modify and extend, and extend that one out. Modify and trim, and trim away the rest of that excess shape. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is go ahead and create some stitch holes on this spot before I, before I start going any further. So I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna create it kinda of right here on the top and in the middle, 0 0.05 for a stitch hole, and then D for dimension, and I think I'm gonna make it a set distance on top there of 0 0.125. And this stitch I'm fine with being right there on that line. Next I'm gonna mirror and zoom in and really make sure you select that circle. And I'm gonna mirror it across that line that we're mirroring everything else across. So now I've got a hole on the other side. Click OK and finish that sketch off. So now we've got our piece ready to turn into a flange. Um, you're gonna to have to select that last little bit from your projected geometry. And sometimes you can kind of see that it highlights some pieces that you might have missed. So do take the time to um, select any, any lines that might be outside of your realm of your closed profile. Yeah, that, looks, that looks pretty good. You can go ahead and make sure that it's on the the right side by zooming in, and if for some reason it's not, just remember to select your opposite side and it'll switch it over. All right, so now we've got our first piece. Now we can start creating our stitch pattern. So if you've used any of my tutorials before, you probably are familiar with pattern on path. If it's set to a face, we're gonna select the face there select the path there, and come back to that front view. Bring this down in the direction we want them to go, set it to spacing. I'm gonna make there be a bunch of them, and want a bunch of them a quarter inch apart. Path direction to make sure it follows it, and I'm gonna to need to add a lot more of these. Oh, even more. All right, less. Now, once you get close, just go ahead and zoom in. And these are your quantity. Just hit the down button until I'm pretty happy with where that is. So it doesn't line right up with my perfectly even stitch. So I'm gonna switch, switch to extent. And this is gonna let me drag this little piece and line it right up with the middle. You can even zoom in and really get that as accurate as you want. And I'm gonna uncheck that last one so that I don't have two circles. There we go, nice even spacing. I'm gonna hit okay. And let your computer process for a second because it's creating a hundred and something individual little holes. So be patient with it. All right, so now we've got what looks pretty good, some, some holes along that, that pattern. So now we need to send those back through there. So uh, most of the time I'm going to create another sketch. I'm gonna project it onto that surface just so that I've got a, another one to work with of everything all in one sketch. And then what I like to do is highlight it and right click and say break link. So now these aren't connected anymore. If you wanted to change the profile in the back, it's not gonna to link to the front. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete that line. So now there's just a sketch with some, with some holes in it. Finish that sketch. 
turn back on my body if I want. So I'm going to hit E for extrude, and I'm going to drag a window over the top of all those circles. Zoom in, hold control, and deselect these other bays. It doesn't look like it's holding it. Let's try that again. So let's get rid of that component. Select these. That looks better. So it's going to try and select any body that you put a window over. And the last thing you want to do is select a hundred of these little dots. So now we can turn back on the visibility for everything we want to cut through. And drag that stitch backwards and set it to cut. So now we're cutting through the surface. Don't need to cut that far. All right, go ahead and hit OK. Give your computer a second to process. And now we've got a component with some stitches in front and a piece with matching stitches in the back. And you know, I'll point out right now that it's true, some of these aren't going to line up perfect with your piece of leather. It's a little bit towards the edge, but you know, if you're worried about that, you can you can try and change that in your flat pattern. So let's go ahead and finish this off. We've got these two pieces and we want to not have to make the other side. So what I'm going to do is one of these I'm going to join and one of them I'm going to copy. So this one here, we're actually wanting to create and mirror. And not faces, but bodies. So this entire body, and we're going to mirror it across our mirror plane. So now we've got two bodies sitting here, and now we're going to get a little tricky. Go ahead and come back to your solid modeling environment and click on modify and combine. It's going to let you select both of these bodies, turn them into one body. Now we can come back to sheet metal and we do just have this one sheet metal body now. So we don't want to do that for our other component. We're wanting to mirror the entire component to create a new component. So mirror, and then this time, components. Select the component, and then select that same mirror plane. There we go. So now we've got stitch holes on both sides. We've got two separate components. And remember, your components are your individual pieces of leather. And just real quick, you guys could come up and say drawing from design uh, and create your flat pattern. Let's go ahead and see what the flat pattern looks like. Create flat pattern, select your stationary entity, and hit OK. It's going to take that piece and it's going to stretch it out. And there you go. You can see the stitch pattern accommodating for the curve. And if you were really cutting this out of leather, you might find that you don't cut these little um, darts out of there because you could actually compress the leather together. All right, well, I hope this was helpful for you guys, give you another idea on how to put together patterns. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay creative.